Hello guys and welcome back to another video in this launch control training series. So in this video, we're gonna discuss everything around importing your leads. We're gonna show you the direct import where things have already been skip traced as well as if you need them skip traced, what your options are, all right? Now, the feature can be found on the left-hand side of the screen when you log into your launch control. You will see a series of different settings or options, a dashboard inbox, direct import, and skip trace. So first, we're gonna talk about direct import. Now, this is when you already have a list of leads or prospects that has been skip traced and you already have the phone numbers. Okay, so let's dive in. So now we're on the direct import page. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click the import list button. Now, I would highly recommend before you get started, you click here to download a sample import file. That's just gonna show you the optimal way to have your file laid out to make things easy for launch control. But you do have the option to map the fields. So it's a pretty easy process to follow, but I would definitely recommend downloading that. Now, a couple things as far as house cleaning are concerned. The name of your list, whether it's an XLSX file, a XLS or a CSV file, sometimes launch control will give you resistance depending on the way your file is named. So what they recommend is eliminating any special characters in the naming Convention. So you want to maintain just simply text, so letters and numbers. So you know you don't want to have underscores or hyphens or anything like that because it can kick it back and cause problems with importing. So you may still be able to import them. Sometimes it goes through. It's kind of finicky. So I would just recommend just to make it easier on you so you don't have to attempt things multiple times is just get rid of any special characters in your naming convention. That's the first thing. Second thing, when go importing a list larger than 10,000, sometimes, not always, it doesn't like it. So if you try to import a list larger than 10,000 and it kicks it back, the first thing that you should do after you've made sure that the naming convention is correct and doesn't have special characters, the next step that I would take is I would split that list up into lists of, of no more than 10,000 rows at a time and just call them part one, part two, part three, uh, and import them separately. And then if you want those to all be associated to the same campaign, you're just gonna attach them to that same campaign name. So it's pretty easy to do so let's dive in so you can either drag and drop files here on this the screen or you can click the import button and when you do that it's going to open up your field now we've created a test file that we want to import so we're going to go ahead and select that now notice i have the underscores so we'll see and as well as parentheses we may run into trouble here but let's take a look so we're going to open that and first thing you're gonna notice at the top is it's gonna give you the name of the list that you're importing. So you wanna make sure that that obviously matches up to the list you're trying to import. And then below, you're gonna see there's three columns. You've got launch control field, which is what's displayed in launch control. You've got the file column data, which when you select the file column name, it is going to display the first three rows of data there so you can determine whether you've selected the right column. Now, if you have your columns named appropriately, then this is gonna be a very easy process for you. You're just gonna match them up. But some of us out there, I'm not gonna call on any names, but some of you guys might name things inappropriately just you know it just doesn't make sense you could just be a b c d columns whatever so this feature is really going to help you map that out so when i select this drop down it's going to give me the list so these are the column names that i have in my spreadsheet so if i select first name that obviously matches up with the launch control field and then it's going to display the first three names that i have in my first three rows so i can see all right that's correct now just to give you an example, if you didn't name your columns appropriately, whatever they were named, and let's say you selected the wrong one, it's gonna show you what that data is so you can determine, all right, well, do those look like first names or last names? Or if I selected phone number, does that information look like a first name? Clearly, it's not a first name. So that will help you to determine which of these fields need to be mapped appropriately. But the easiest way to make sure that it's super simple is just name your columns appropriately. Just name them first name, last name, mailing address, mailing city, and so forth. So we're gonna start, we're gonna do first name, we're just gonna map all of these mailing address. Now, mailing address and property address, some of you who are just getting started might not understand why there's a difference. So for those of you who don't understand, I'm gonna explain this. So you have different types of ownership. You have owner-occupied properties and you have absentee owner properties. So an absentee owner property is a rental property. So I own a property at one, two, three, Main Street, but that is not my primary address. Maybe I live on Broad Street, right? So my mailing address might be Broad Street, but the property address that we're referencing is gonna be that rental property, 123 Main Street. 
So that's why you might have different information for both of these both of these fields, right? Um, vice versa, if it is a owner-occupied property, I live at 123 Main Street, and the property that we're trying to reach out to this person about is 123 Main Street, so it's gonna be the same, all right? So so if it is the same, if it's owner-occupied, then what we suggest is just doing mailing address, mailing city, mailing state, and mailing zip. And again, if it's owner-occupied, you can go down and select same as mailing address, same as mailing city, same as mailing state and same as mailing zip code, right? Now, again, if it is a non-owner occupied or an absentee owner, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go in and you select property address, property city, property state, and property zip. Otherwise, you're gonna run into problems. But the biggest thing, the most important thing here is property address is referencing the property that you're targeting so if you are trying to reach out to them about their property at 123 abc street that's the property you're interested in making an offer on that is what you want to make sure maps appropriately okay and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions launch control support can also help you with this but it's a pretty straightforward process and then finally you want to map the phone numbers now you only have options for mapping the first three phone numbers so those are going to be the ones with the highest propensity to be a correct number anyway if you're using best skip tracer they're going to give you uh, full up to four mobile numbers and up to four landline numbers so you're not going to be able to use all of those we just use the first three mobile lines when we're using best skip tracer okay so now that I have everything mapped and I double check, okay, these look like first names, these look like last names, yep, that's a street address, that's a city, state, zip, everything looks pretty accurate, so I'm good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and select import list, okay? Now this may take a few moments depending on how large your list is, and as you can see, it is in queue and it's importing right now, so it might give you an upload in progress. Again, depending on how large this list is, it could take a little bit longer. So now we see that the import has been completed, so we're gonna hit OK, and it's gonna provide me some info. So it's gonna tell me the total number of rows, which is three, the total number of prospects, which is three, how many of the numbers are mobile numbers, and how many of the numbers are landline numbers. Now, this, I created a test, there was only three rows of data, three prospects, each of them had three phone numbers, and of those nine total numbers, one of them is coming up as a landline, the other eight are coming up as mobile numbers, so that's good. Now these, these are fake numbers and fake people, so obviously nobody's gonna be on the come out of the blacklist litigator scrub. This is a great feature. What it's doing is it's looking for known litigators. This is people who make a business out of taking companies to court over marketing to them. So anybody that's on this list of known litigators, it's gonna remove them out of here. And you can see with previous lists, we've removed a bunch of records. So that way we're not marketing to them, which is ultimately not going to open us up to the potential of a lawsuit, okay? It'll also remove anybody from DNCs, so prospects already on the internal do not call list, and then existing matches. So if you imported a list and there was numbers or names in there from a previous list that you already had, it's going to scrub those out so you're not targeting those people again okay so now we've got our list imported and the next thing that we need to do there is we need to assign it to a campaign so the way you're gonna do that is you're gonna click on assign to campaign and then you're just gonna see the options here for what campaigns are created now there may already be a campaign created that you want to attach it to if there's not then you're gonna to need to go into the campaign page and create a specific campaign for that particular list all right now again this is a test list so we don't want to attach this to a campaign we don't want it to start sending text to these numbers they're fake they're non-existent so we're not gonna go ahead and attach that but if you do you just click the button and you'll notice on the previous import, it'll tell you what campaign it's associated to, which is Andrew January 2022, new. So that's this one here. And you can add as many lists to that campaign as you would like. So what some people will do is if they're always targeting a couple different niches, like absentee owner, they might have a campaign named absentee owner. And every time they pull an absentee owner list, they just add it to the same campaign, right? Others might want to 
segregate those out and they might want to say okay absentee owners in January so they'll put any lists that they import in January into that one then they might create one absentee owners February so now in February any lists that they're pulling for absentee owners are going to that one so you just need to determine what you really want to track and how much you want to segregate to for your tracking purposes all right so that's it as far as importing a list that does not need to be skip traced the next one is going to be the skip trace list so I'll show you if you are going to use launch control you're going to go in on the left hand side directly below the direct import there is a button for skip trace and you'll see here that you have run skip trace run a skip trace to get phone numbers now you can download the template to add your prospects and maximize the matches I would highly recommend doing that it's just going to give you the right format and if you click on skip trace it's basically going to do the exact same thing as the direct import however it's going to send it over to their skip tra skip tracing department so you're going to click on import and then you're going to click on the list that you want to import you hit open it's gonna read the file and you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna map the fields right but if you notice on the launch control fields it doesn't even have an option for phone numbers because you're utilizing their skip tracing services to skip trace those numbers so you shouldn't have numbers in here you're gonna import this and then it's gonna skip trace those records for you automatically and then import them and then it'll put them in the direct import list so you have to go back in there and then attach that list to a campaign. So those are the steps that you'll need to take. Now, this is not an option that we use very frequently because we get better pricing on skip tracing through different source that provides what we feel is the best data. And there'll be more information about that in the description below. Uh, but if you wanna learn more about that, the company is Best Skip Tracer. And if you use the link that you find below in our description, you're actually gonna get 50% off your first month subscription. And the reason we love it so much is because the bulk of our marketing is via text messaging. And what we found after researching lots of companies is that we get the highest propensity for mobile numbers using Best Skip Tracer to the tune of 60% of our lists will have mobile numbers when we skip trace it through Best Skip Tracer. The other great thing is the price. So we haven't been able to find a better price at a better quality in the entire industry. So with launch control, the standard pricing is 50 cents per record if you've used our affiliate link then you'll get grandfathered into discounted 12 cents per record but if you sign up for best skip tracer and again we highly recommend you use our link below because you're gonna get 50% off your first month but the other thing is you're gonna get eight cent per record pricing and that's phenomenal especially when you consider the steps that they take to skip trace and the results that you get from that they're going to provide you up to four mobile numbers up to four landline numbers additionally for those of you that like to cold call or have a cold calling team they have what's called skippy's polar pick and what they've done is they've identified the number one phone number that you should be using to call to get a hold of this person so that's going to be its own separate column that could be a mobile or a landline number but it's going to be the number that has the highest chance of being the correct number so you can just cold call and just go right down that skippy's polar pick you can also get emails as well but that's why we use best skip tracer and again if you want more information that's going to be in the description below but it's a very simple process so if you're just looking for straightforward and you don't want to have a bunch of different softwares you just want to be easy and go in and handle it then using launch control is a great way to do it they're going to focus on getting you mobile numbers and again make sure you use our affiliate link so you get not only the discounted skip tracing so you'll save three cents per record for your skip tracing but the other thing you're going to get is if you're on the light package of launch control that gives you 2500 records to text new records but using our affiliate link you're going to get double the records so you're going to get up to 5,000 new prospects by using our affiliate link so comment below let us know if you have any questions and definitely don't forget to like and subscribe this video and if you have any questions at all put it in the comments we're happy to help out and answer any questions that you have.